Britain's emergency bikers are the lone rangers of the road. The heroes on the front line... You're under arrest. ..in the battle to save and protect lives. Two wheels are quicker than four on some of the most congested roads in Europe. You undertook at 90 to 100 mile an hour. They get help where it's most needed, fast. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. In this new series, some old biker favourites in Essex and Cornwall. And introducing the biker paramedics of Bristol. She's really, really struggling. <laughs> the minute they're on scene, we're right there with them. Coming up, an allergic reaction becomes life threatening. <sighs> Sorry, mate. That means we there. A straight talking biker cop. Your thumbs up your bum and your brain's in neutral, isn't it, really? <laughs> Bank holiday biker horror. Whoa! And when a simple movement is agony. Ah. An April morning in the southwest. On patrol, biker paramedic Richard Code. The baby of the Bristol team is between jobs in the seaside town of Clevedon, 16 miles from the city centre. Some of the first things people say when I walk into an emergency is, oh, you look young. So, yeah, I am young, actually. I'm coming up 25 this year. When I did start, I had a little life experience, but you have to grow up quickly. You can't, can't stay young forever, unfortunately. The bikers can find themselves anywhere, from the coast to the Mendips, across to Chepstow, and into Gloucestershire. Back in Bristol. Oh, see you. Thank you. Rich is responding to an urgent 999 call. A man working in a boatyard is having a severe allergic reaction. If he goes into anaphylactic shock, he could die in minutes. Rich needs to get there fast. In just under five minutes, he arrives first on scene. Hiya, guys, you're right. So, what's been happening? Have you ever had an allergic reaction before? Not like this. Do we know what exactly he's eating? We obviously, we want to just eat spinach out of can, but... No, it was, uh, I did a smoothie. Lenny knows he's allergic to spinach, but he's only had mild reactions in the past. It's never been this bad before. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it makes my ears itch. OK, no problem. You're quite red there, I can see it. Uh, what symptoms are you suffering at the moment? Spots. OK, just, just stay nice and relaxed. How's your breathing feeling? Okay. Your breathing's all right. And how's your tongue? Is it swollen at all? Oh, yeah. It feels a bit weird. Feels a bit weird. Can you stick it out for me? Yeah. The signs and symptoms that worry us is airway swelling. So if someone's got a swollen tongue, or they feel their throat's kind of closing up, or if they've got a wheeze, and that, that can be quite concerning because that can develop into life-threatening conditions. There are clear signs of an allergic reaction, but Rich is on the lookout for symptoms of anaphylactic shock, fast pulse, and low blood pressure. You're lying on the floor, is that because you feel lightheaded, or is there another reason? <laughs> Have you got any pain anywhere, sir? In your stomach. In your stomach, okay. I'm gonna pop this on your finger, okay? Quick listen to your breathing, if that's all right. Allergic reactions go one of each other ways. They can just be a local reaction, or a rash, or an itch. They can sort themselves out. Take a deep breath. Or they can really go downhill. He's been sick a couple of times. He has, has he? When did this all start, Lenny? 15 minutes ago. About 15 minutes ago. Okay. Okay, you've got all these hives all over you, haven't you? Have you ever had these before? No. Are they itchy at all? Yeah. They are, and you've gone very red as well. I presume you're not normally quite red. No. Do you feel lightheaded at all? Yeah. You do. Okay. And did that start 15 minutes ago as well? Yeah. It did. Okay. So, Lenny, uh, what we can do for you is we can give you a, a, a drug to kind of ease. Whoa. You're feeling sick. Have we got a bowl, anyone? Yeah. I'm going to arrange an ambulance to come pick you up, all right? And in the meantime, we can see if we can do the vital obs. Yeah. yeah. Rich needs to check Lenny's blood pressure to get a clear picture of how badly his body's reacting. Use this hand, if you straighten this one out for me. 
Just four minutes after Rich arrived, an ambulance is on scene. He's never had an allergic reaction quite this bad, but he has got, he's covered in hives, a bit of nausea and some vomiting as well. Lenny, you all right, mate? But I couldn't get, quite get a blood pressure. You all right, mate? Do you just, you got a bit of diarrhea? How are you feeling up on your feet? Are you feeling lightheaded? Lenny? Lenny might be on his feet for now, but it's unlikely the reaction has stopped. You all right, buddy? What we're going to do is we're just going to go straight to the ambulance if that's all right with you. The next few minutes will be crucial. So have you got any pain anywhere? Is it just the itchiness? Just your guts. Just your guts. Are they hurting? Yeah. Lenny's sickness isn't getting better. It's getting worse. Can I lay down? Actually, yeah, of course yeah. you can. Um, right, OK. How's that, mate? Yeah. yeah? The first drug the team give him is an intravenous antihistamine, just like hay fever tablets, but much stronger. It should stop the reaction in Lenny's body. Let me just see if I can get a blood pressure on you as well. Oh, just keep that on straight, keep that on straight. Rich and the team have finally managed to get a blood pressure reading from Lenny. 86 over 52, yeah? It's dangerously low. Lenny is going into anaphylactic shock. Do you want some fluids then, yeah? Oh! Uh, yeah, I reckon so. Rich and the team now have a battle to keep him alive. That looks really bad. In a Bristol dockyard, a spinach smoothie has plunged Lenny into anaphylactic shock. I could give you a quick injection into the top of your arm. It is adrenaline, but it's going to make your body um, cope with what you're suffering a little bit better, OK? Sharp scratch in your arm. His blood pressure has crashed. He's fighting for his life. 25-year-old biker paramedic Rich is working hard to save him. All done. When we recognised that he was in shock, we just step up the game. So we, we move into aggressive treatment mode. We'll start this one running anyway, mate. This is just saline, so just really to bulk his, um, his blood out, really, because his blood pressure is so low. You're right, mate. The combination of saline and adrenaline should boost Lenny's blood pressure. Otherwise, his vital organs could be starved of blood and could shut down. Let's get you um, a blanket. <sighs> Sorry, mate. Well, the allergic reaction is quite bad at this moment in time, all right? So we're going to give you these medications to make you start feeling better. So I'm just going to start putting a little bit of fluid in you, all right? We give a lot of drugs in a very short time of space. Hydrocortisone. We give adrenaline. We give a drug called clothenamine. And we give a drug called hydrocortisone. And we also give an anti-sickness. And all these drugs kind of combine together to help the body fight the reaction. You're right, mate. You let me know if you're going to be sick, all right? Because I'm right in your wall, path. OK, so it's coming up. It's nine minutes since his first injection, and at last, Lenny's blood pressure is picking up. Yeah, sure. But the drugs will make him feel worse, even though they're doing good. <coughs> I'm already sick. <coughs> That'd be great. OK. OK. All right. I'm getting You've got to open it. Yeah, yeah. OK. Ready? Just need to stick some stickers on your chest, OK? It's quite a bad allergic reaction, OK? Rich wants to check Lenny's heart. Yeah. An allergic reaction as severe as this could cause cardiac arrest. OK. Right, so just relax, OK? I need you to do as still as you can now. This machine's very sensitive, OK? I'll leave over. You feeling cold? No. It's had 200 milligrams of cortisone. The cocktail of drugs is causing this violent shaking. But Lenny is gradually starting to recover. Do you ever have an EpiPen, one of the things you stab in your leg? No. 
that all happens sometimes when I eat spinach, I get like itchy ears and... Okay. Lenny will still need to go to hospital, but for now, he's out of danger. All right, Lenny. Yeah, man. Hopefully you're going to be all right, okay? I'm going to leave you this crew. They're going to be brilliant, all right? Cool. Feel better soon, all right, mate? Yeah, Take care. What we're going to do now is get him off to hospital nice and quickly, because there is always the risk that he could go back downhill and back into shock. Essex biker cops are out in force, manning a busy intersection on the A130. On the lookout for any law-breaking drivers or travelling criminals. On the hunt today, PC Ray Jeffrey. I'm in my 29th year of service now. I can retire next year if I wish to. One of the things that makes this job so interesting for me is how something that would appear to be routine can suddenly become something really interesting. The Biker Cop team will pull in 150 vehicles in the next six hours. It's going to be a busy day. <laughs> 10.50am. Traffic cameras have triggered an alert and Ray pulls in the van in question. The white transit behind me has been circulated as uh, involved in a burglary stroke theft yesterday. A description of three males on board at that time. Time for Ray to do some investigating, to see if these are the men they're looking for. We're stopping all the light commercials that we see today. We don't know if you're carrying stolen scrap, cable. We always check your documents. <laughs> no, I'm come out or it's been round, round well, got I got one that got pulled over and was in one of them new little fiestas getting a proper drive. Oh, no, of oh, course not. No, no, you're not. But they're not commercial vans, so that's unlikely, isn't it? We will have a quick look in the back as well before we finish, if that's yeah. OK. Have you got anything on board? There's a couple of old, two old fridges in the back. Is that it? Yeah. OK. Bloody hell. Some interesting information has just come in from control. They're just reading out some previous convictions. Yeah, I was in <clears throat> I guess that, yeah. The van matches the wanted one, but that doesn't mean these two men were involved in yesterday's crime. We need to know the description. Yeah. The people yesterday. Yeah, I'm going to do that anyway. <clears throat> All right, then look in the back. Yeah. Just as the driver said, all that's in the back of the van are two old fridges. No stolen goods. Just make a note of your details and then I'll give you your licences back before I forget. Descriptions of the wanted men are coming through. Martin, uh, I need to liaise with you in relation to yesterday's incident. Can we make sure everyone's 10-8 on site? The descriptions seem to fit these two men. Yeah, we'd like to be double sure before we start taking people's liberties. I've managed to ascertain that there is a description on the incident yesterday of the three males that were involved. We're seen to break into premises of fencing and paving premises and steal items from the yard. So I think we're going to bring them into custody uh, so that they can be interviewed in relation to that. Take much it could do. Got a couple more things Were you about. driving this yesterday? No. Who was no. driving it yesterday? I don't know. I weren't about yesterday. You weren't about, okay. No. Is that dead? Yeah, yeah. Ray's colleague is having a word with Dad. You should know it's your van. You said to me no one else drives it. Well, who was driving it yesterday? If someone was, someone was using it yesterday. Ray and his fellow officers think they've got enough to make an arrest. Can you hop out for me, please, mate? I will need your keys. Why? Come into the back and I'll explain what's happening. This vehicle... Yeah. Keep your hands out your pockets for me, because that makes me nervous. One at a time. 
This vehicle was seen at the scene of a burglary yesterday in the Greys area. Let me explain it to you. Vehicle. Three occupants, descriptions match yourself. I'm going to arrest you on suspicion of burglary and or theft yesterday. You don't have to say anything about that, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention to me now yeah, on, mate, yeah. or in an interview, yeah. something that you later... You ain't taking the van, are you? The van's parked up the I'll explain here. what happens with that in a moment, OK? What I do need is your wrists, because I need to put you in handcuffs. Yeah, have you got no. anything in your pockets no, that's likely to harm no. you or me? No, no. You've worn these before? They're yeah. horrible, aren't they? This is a joke, mate. How can you arrest me for just going out and having a drive in this Because of the information I've got in relation to the vehicle, as I said to you. Okay. Yeah, to the vehicle. Whose vehicle is it? It's not my vehicle, mate. It doesn't matter whose well, the vehicle is. Matter. Mind it your head. Matter, it? Thank you. I'm going to cuff you for my safety as well as yours, all right? Put your hands across your front. The younger one of the two is um, not best pleased. I think he described it as a load of bollocks. Dad, quite amenable. The van will be seized and the pair are taken to Basildon, eight miles away, for questioning. All right, mate. Both father and son were released without charge later that day. Police still haven't found the burglars. May bank holiday, Friday afternoon. And biker paramedic Rob Griffiths is clocking on. First job of the day is to get the bike sorted and ready for action. Just need to make sure everything's safe as possible. See, riding bikes is inherently dangerous anyway, but adding the kind of emergency element to it just makes it even more so. so. My missus kind of used to me riding the bikes now. She, she gets a bit nervous when the weather's inclement, or should I say. Yeah, she worries a little bit about me. It may be a fine day, but a 999's just come in that Rob's wife would dread. Two motorcyclists have been in an accident 15 miles away. When I hear motorcycle RTC, obviously um, I get a nervous energy in my stomach. It's quite significant being a biker myself. I know the potential for injury is massive. We've got fast roads down in here in Cornwall. Um, we've got tractors pulling out the roads. We've got wildlife that could jump in front of a bike. So. Yep, the butterflies come in the stomach. Rob can top 100 miles an hour on his way to emergencies. In 2012, six bikers were killed on UK roads every week and 96 seriously injured. This is what awaits him. Captured on camera by one of the other bikers in the group. Oh!
In Cornwall, biker paramedic Rob is racing to a rider and pillion passenger who've just come off their bike. One of the other bikers was filming at the time and captured this. Two people, was it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, rider. All these are males, the rider is just a pillion. Okay. Put it close to the bike in front, clipped it, come down to the right, maybe 60 feet. What's all Steve we talking? Hi guys, all right. All right, Jack. Okay. 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 Neither biker appears to be badly hurt but there is a serious risk of hidden injuries. Rob's taking no chances. Ladies, can I have you lay down, my darling? We're going to board you both, all right? So that means putting on spinal cords, all right? How old are you, mate? 19. She's 18. Holly, 19, and what's your name, my sweet? Emily, and you're 18. All I need to do, Emily, is listen to your chest, mate. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart, what's hurting you? My wrist. Your wrist, okay. Yeah, I you Deep breath, okay. Stella. Okay. So that wrist is her, and that's the main thing, okay. Both obviously holding and protecting their right arm. Um, they're both a little bit distressed. Obviously, our main concern is heads, necks, chests, and stomach. Could I get one of you guys in a minute bye -bye. to hold Emily's head, hands on the side, just keep it nice and still. There could be a risk of spinal injuries. Accidents can sign 60 bikers a year to wheelchairs. Fingers anywhere? Uh, yeah. All my fingers, three fingers, my wrist, all that. In Cornwall, biker paramedic Rob is racing to a rider and pillion passenger who've just come off their bike. One of the other bikers was filming at the time and captured this. Whoa! There we go. Two people, was it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, rider. All these are males, the rider is just a pillion. Okay. Put it close to the bike in front, clipped it, come down to the right, maybe 60 feet. What's all Steve we talking? Hi guys, all right. All right, Jack. Okay. Okay. Neither biker appears to be badly hurt, but there is a serious risk of hidden injuries. Rob's taking no chances. Ladies, can I have you lay down, my darling? We're going to board you both, all right? So that means putting on spinal cords, all right? How old are you, mate? 19. She's 18. Holly, 19. And what's your name, my sweet? Emily, and you're 18. All I need to do, Emily, is listen to your chest, mate. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart, what's hurting you? My wrist. Your wrist, okay. Yeah, I you that. Deep breath, okay. Stella. Okay. So that wrist is her, and that's the main thing, okay. Both obviously holding and protecting their right arm. Um, they're both a little bit distressed. Obviously, our main concern is heads, necks, chests, and stomach. Could I get one of you guys in a minute bye -bye. to hold Emily's head, hands on the side, and just keep it nice and still? There could be a risk of spinal injuries. Accidents can sign 60 bikers a year to wheelchairs. Fingers anywhere? Uh, yeah. All my fingers, three fingers, my wrist, all that side, yeah? This leg, Ollie. Rob quickly checks for any obvious breaks. Well, down this one. Somebody come up yeah, behind this gentleman here, hands on the side of the head. Keeping it nice and still for me. All right, Emily. We're going to have to start cutting all this stuff off, my darling. All right. Please, I've got my jacket off. Please, I've got my jacket off. All right, all right, all right. Emily. Please, I've got my jacket off. Let's discuss this with you, all right? I'm not... I'm not... No, 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 Emily, I'm not... Emily, calm. Somebody who can um, appear um, angry, fed up, aggressive, can sometimes um, mask the symptoms of head injury. So we still have to be very careful with her. Okay. Rider, passenger, Emily 18, Holly 19. I think we've got too close to the front here. But it's 60 feet slid down on their right hand side. Rob hands Emily over to the ambulance crew, so he can now concentrate on 19-year-old Ollie. Mate, Ollie, your kit's got to go, bud. Are you OK with that? Yeah, All right. Yeah, 
He's been through a bit of a traumatic experience in travelling reasonably quick on his motorcycle and come off and slid down the road about 60 yards. But it could be something else lurking under these leathers. Make sure that we don't miss anything. Motorcycles are susceptible to injuries all over, not just the neck and their back, but their, their hips, their legs, their arms. It's just massive potential for any injury. OK, mate, all right. Can I have a blanket when one of you's ready? And another collar whenever you guys are ready? Most of Ollie's pain is coming from his right hand, but Rob's checking everything. Gloves coming off, mate, all right? If you want, if you want pain, let's get... OK, mate. Let me get some gas and air for you. There you go, you hold on to that one. Yeah. Breathe in and out, deep breaths. Well done, Ollie. Okay. Okay, Ollie. Well done, mate. Yeah, good. Right, 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 right. They're in they're intact. Shoulder okay? Yep. Yeah. The arm okay? Yeah. yeah. Elbow all right? Radius. In there? Yeah. All right, OK. Yeah. Let me feel down these bones. Uh, yeah. yeah. OK. What about your fingers? Can you feel me touching your fingers? Yeah, touching that one. I'd like a collar on this chap and then we'll splint his arm. Emily's ready to go to hospital. Be a little bit of movement on your neck here while we pop this collar on, sir. OK. okay. Rob still isn't taking any chances with Ollie. This isn't designed for comfort, my friend. It's all right, all okay. right. Just further. Collar on, I'm on. Right, Ollie, what do you think about morphine? Uh, you know what, I might pass on it. OK. I'm all right on this for now. I'd still like to pop a little needle in the back of your hand, though. Is that all right, yeah? yeah? If any problems do develop, and there is some unseen injuries, i.e. internal injuries, but we've got our line in. Nice and quick, nice and early. So if we need to give any fluids or anything like that later, we can do that. You put your hand in the most comfortable position now. Rob immobilises Ollie's arm in a vacuum splint and checks his fingers again for sensation. Fingers there, uh, yeah? Okay. It was a little bit numb on that last one. But... A little bit numb on this one? No, next one. This one? Yeah, a little okay. bit on the knuckle. All right. Any sort of altered sensation in limbs, hands, feet, arms, legs um, could suggest a, a spinal injury. Absolutely. Obviously, we take best care and, and treat for the worst and hope for the best. OK. Down the road on your face, mate. I know, right? So about 50-ish miles an hour, we saying. Yeah. OK. You can see the marks on the road, look. With the speed of the crash, Rob's struggling to believe there are no other injuries. Right, Ollie. What we're going to do again, just to double-check, we're going to have a quick feel down your body again, make sure there's nothing else that we've missed, OK? Let me have a feel. Ollie, I'm pushing on the bones of your neck. Any pain there at all? No. OK. You remember what happened, you weren't knocked out. Don't feel sick and your vision's normal? I felt sick to begin with, my vision's okay. all right. I just can't see because of the sun. OK. Tell me if yeah, you've got any pains be. anywhere in your chest? No. no. You feel me touching your toes? Yeah. Same both sides. Yeah. When did you pass your test, Ollie? How long ago? Two, three months. All ah, right, so quite a new bike here. Well, maybe four months. I've had two big bikes, so... Have you? Yeah, what happened to the first one? I bought this one, believe it or not, yesterday. Oh, are you kidding me? No. Nope. Oh, mate. And I was thinking in my head, how can I open that? Oh, dear. Are you warm enough, Ollie? Yeah, I just... I'm not sure why I'm shaking. No, nah, you should shock me a bit. Everyone ready? Yep. Set and roll. Everyone ready? Set and lower. Nearly there, mate. There we are. Yeah, right, OK. Yeah. Lovely. Is Mother going to give you our time, do you think? You'll be my dad. You'll be your dad, will it? None of my family yeah. ride apart from me. Don't they? Right. I'm off. Well, they don't really understand the lessee ride, do they? They don't get it. There's going to be right. some I told you so coming second, around, isn't it? Everybody ready? Set and lift. We clear. That's pure inexperience, that. You know, he bought the bike, you know, was it 24 hours ago or something like that? He hasn't been riding very long. He hadn't passed his test long ago. You know, his mate was going out for an overtake. He thought he was going. He went for it himself. Um, the chap in front changed his mind and he's, he's run up the back of him. So it is it's just pure inexperience, really. He should have been keeping his eyes, you know, ahead on the road. But, um, you know, we all make mistakes, don't we? It was just a very sudden impact and then a lot of sliding. Other than that, I was just worried for my girlfriend. 
I would still 100% jump on him. Bike's my life. No doubt. Um... Bikers are 35 times more likely to be killed in an accident than car drivers. And teenagers are particularly at risk. Luckily, they haven't come off too badly. Potential's huge. If you look at the distance on the road they've travelled, um, lucky to be alive. Lucky to be alive. There you go. Parked up near the police BMWs. Not your typical traffic cop bike. This hot rod is the pride and joy of PC Tracy Bishop. I have got a Triumph Rocket 3 Roadster. Mean machine, basically. The colour is purple. Everyone says it's pink, but it's not. It's purple. I love the colour purple. Uh, husband and I got married at Grayson's in Memphis and did Route 66 for the honeymoon. So this is my crash helmet that I bought. Yeah, I'm a, I've been a biker since I was 16. If you cut me in half, it'll say biker bird all the way through. I, I still have to pinch myself that I actually get paid for riding a motorcycle. It's awesome. <laughs> and this biker bird has to start her shift, swapping her civvies for the biker cop uniform. Today we're patrolling on the A12 and it's got a very high volume of traffic and hence we do have quite a lot of crashes on there. Since 2009, nearly 4,000 people have been killed or seriously injured on Essex roads. The A12 has claimed many of those lives. It isn't long before Tracy catches up with some drivers behaving badly. Some need a firm telling off. My colleague in the white car, he flashed you and you did an emergency stop. You stood on your brakes. Yeah. Didn't you? Why did you do that? You're looking at either you knocking me knocking on your parents' door or your wife or girlfriend's door saying you're not coming home. Others get a more colourful reproach. Are your tyres allergic to lane one? <laughs> You've been in lane two the whole time. Just a verbal warning this time, yeah. Your thumbs up your bum and your brain's in neutral, isn't it, really? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> In a bid to make the A12 safer, the biker cops are dealing with 250 motoring offences in just a month on the 47-mile stretch they police. And with good reason. The A12 is, is, a, is a dreadful road. Vehicles are, uh, are being driven on it as if it's a motorway. So at motorway speeds, there's no hard shoulder that so the motorway has got. Um, it hasn't got motorway service stations that, that motorways would have. Because it's a, a major trunk road, that if there is uh, a crash, and there are many crashes on that road, the road will come to a standstill in a heartbeat. More than 80,000 vehicles thunder along this main artery every day. So when a car breaks down, there's potential for disaster. Tracy spotted something on the opposite carriageway. A broken down car in a live lane. Tracy's racing to the rescue. The fast flowing traffic, including 40 ton lorries, have no idea the broken down vehicle is in their path. Tracy must warn them. She performs a rolling roadblock, a manoeuvre to slow and halt the traffic before it reaches the broken down vehicle ahead. Tracy can't wait for an hour. 
or she'll have a major traffic jam on her hands. This car needs moving, now. Just hang for a minute. Are the keys in the ignition? Oh. I'm just going to try and get it in gear. Right, OK. Right, if you hold on to the handbrake, right, when I tell you, just lift it off. Right, lift it off now. With no hard shoulder, the car must be as far off the road as possible. And Tracy will move it, whatever it takes. Is that a gear? No, it's not. Need a bit more, don't we? Just need a little bit more. <laughs> Just a little bit more. Hang on, if we rock it again. That's it. Super. Handbrake. Excellent. Right. OK. Just three minutes later, the traffic can get moving again. I've learned um, over the time that it's easier to push with my bum than it is with my arms because I've got good strength in my legs from pushing my motorbike about. So it's easier for me to do it with my back and use my thigh muscles than do it with my arm. <laughs> Next time this happens, 999 straight away because you're in a dangerous position, yeah. all right? And when you speak to the AA, say that you're in lane one and they'll come out quicker. OK, take care of yourself. As you can see, there's quite a lot of heavy traffic, so all we need is for someone to see it at the last minute and either swerve and cause a crash, or someone not see it at all. My concern was for their safety. I used to work on the dedicated... On call in Bristol City Centre by Caparamedic Dean Wingnut Wiltshire. Wingnut's been helping the people of Bristol in their hours of need for nine years. When I turn up at somebody's door to help them, um, it's their journey. I'm meeting somebody at their very, very worst normally, and it's completely enough to trust. Um, and that's really, really special to know that you can go to, into somebody's life and they completely trust you and don't know you at all. This morning, Wingnut's heading to a standby point in the city centre when a call comes in. A 32-year-old man is in extreme pain and can't move in his city centre apartment. Hello there. I'm Dean, what's your name? James, what's your name? Dean. Oh, Dean. Hello, James. Right, what's the problem? Uh, I'm just, my back, I've got sciatica sitting shit down my leg, Ron. Um, I tore the ligaments in my lower back beyond my pelvis on the lower left hand side. Okay. And I slipped the disc and it's pushing on the nerve. Okay. I did it in October. Yeah. I've been seeing a chiropractic for the last six months and I was doing really well. I was shocked when I was on the mend. Oh, I woke up this morning. Jumped in the shower, getting ready for work, and um, I bent down to dry my leg, my ankle, my foot. Yeah. I didn't get to my knee in the tape. It was just intense, was it? When I went to the chiropractor in October, when I did it originally, he asked me on a scale of 1 to 10 what the pain was. Yeah. I said like a 10. OK, and what about now? 11. Not <laughs> the scale. Sciatica is a general term for pain caused by trapping the sciatic nerve, often because of a slipped disc. Breathing through that, OK, take a good, good couple of deep breaths. It can make you feel a bit odd. Put that between your feet. That's a really good muscle relaxant as well. Good explanation. You shouldn't do, it should help your pain a lot. How's that, how's that feeling? Is that making it a bit better? I'll be honest with you, a tiny bit, but... Keep going, then. Let me take your blood pressure. A slip disc mm. is incredibly painful and sometimes only the strongest painkillers will have any effect at all. Did you just hold that, stage? Do you want to get a tiny bit more comfortable? Of course. Oh, just... Oh. Oh. It's better to 
to sit on one side. Yeah. Are you just describing it as 11 out of 10? Oh, never had nothing like it. OK. I need to give him some morphine now because he's in a lot of pain. Just cannulated him for that. Oh, God. Have you ever had morphine before? Yeah, I think so. I think I have, yeah. The pain is just, it's, I don't think, unless anybody's had a bad back, you can understand. The pain is just constant, it's just excruciating, it's just, it's the sight I could shoot down my leg, it's a constant pain. I'm going to be going to hospital, are you? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's probably where I need to be. I you think know. you do, actually, yeah, because if, you, if you're not able to move around and you've got that much pain, normal pain release not working, mm -hmm. something needs to change. Yeah. OK. You look like you've relaxed a lot. Mm hmm I can tell by my breathing. I am. I'm coming mm -hmm. down. I'm just, yeah. it's, it's, it's easily, definitely. It's just as well, because a man in pain won't impress paramedic Adele. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Hello. Hello there. What's your name? Hi. Adele. Yeah, nice to meet you, Adele. James. Hi, who are you? James. 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 It's got ongoing back issues. Described it initially as a pain score of 11 out of 10. We're working on a man's pain score there, I take it. So yeah, absolutely. Well, four so, it's, for a woman. so it's about 40 out of 10, then, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so. well, well. <laughs> OK, well, are you able to walk at all? Um, I'm going to need some help putting some trainers on because I'm going to bend down for a squat. Right. Um, you want the socks on as well? No, I'm cool. Just trainers. Can you make sure they're a matching pair if he's going to have socks? I've got some. Uh, <laughs> my trainers are just there, but. Well, so do they smell? No, they're brand new. They're nice. We don't do feet, generally. I think that's... Do you want me to lift your leg up? Yeah, just rub slow. Go on. Oh. See, I didn't see this in my bloody job description. Mm. Mm. Right. Mm. Go for it. Mm. You can call on my shoulder. Mm. Adele normally takes people's clothes off rather than putting them on. <laughs> After a marathon, you can go right next to them, Adele. Yeah, no, thanks. It, it goes for most paramedics. I'll we generally... <laughs> This is my problem. I always get one to put my clothes on. Yeah. Oh, You've got it all backwards, haven't you? <laughs> Story of my life, then. What's that? Sorry? Story of my life, girls putting clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get your chair and then we'll pop you up to the, uh, the BRI. Whether it's Adele's bedside manner or the drugs kicking in, James is more relaxed than he was. The morphine has to the edge off. Good. It's still there, like, you know, but. I just, just earlier on, I, mate, I just didn't know what to do. It's so bad. You were you were hopping, weren't you? There was no off button. Absolutely, yeah. Wingnut thinks it's as good a time as any to try and get him to the ambulance. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to have that back? Have some nice big. <sighs> That movie's not helping, is it, mate? Yeah. Everyone's perception of pain is different. Um, a paper cut can be really, really painful to some person, and another person wouldn't even feel it. I think for James, the pain he had was the worst pain he's ever had before, and I think 11 out of 10 was his measurement today. Although he's not having a baby, James won't be letting go of the gas and air any time soon. I think any woman there is out there who's given birth would have a real issue with a man having a pain score of 11 out of 10 because childbirth is reckoned to be the worst pain you can have. I've never slipped a disc, but I've seen many people that have, and my golly, <laughs> not sure I want it. James was kept in hospital for three days, then sent home in a wheelchair. He was signed off work, and after a week, got himself up and about on crutches. He's been diagnosed with two slipped discs and is still unable to lie flat at night. Whoa! Miraculously, Ollie and Emily, the bikers in Cornwall, escaped with minor injuries after their smash. Oh, darling, all right. Oh, okay. Emily broke her hand. Ollie's was badly bruised. But they were soon back in the saddle, as passionate about biking as ever. Just a little more cautious. Lenny, who went into anaphylactic shock after eating spinach, was in hospital for six hours. Every reaction 